Now we're going to do a review of the brain. We'll start with white matter versus gray matter. White matter is myelinated axons, which the myelination has a lot of fat in it, and so it looks white. So it's considered white matter versus gray matter that is mostly neuron cell bodies as well as dendrites. When we look at the brain itself, we have two hemispheres. We have a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere. The two halves and they are separated by what is known as the longitudinal fissure. This fissure is a space that goes all the way down into the center of the brain. And so a fissure as a definition is a deep, deep groove. When we look at the brain on the outside, we see there is all these wiggles. And these wiggles are known as gyri. And the so small little grooves between the gyrus, or the gyri, are, is known as a sulcus. And so a shallow groove is a sulcus. A deep groove that goes all the way down is a fissure. So we just talked about the two hemispheres. We talked about the right and the left, and the longitudinal fissure that is separating them. Then we have another fissure that is pretty pronounced, and that is in the back, between the cerebrum, which is this top portion, and the cerebellum, which is this small little hindbrain that we have. This is a posterior end. And a transverse fissure is between those two. Also a very deep groove. Let's talk about the lobes of the brain. We have in the anterior portion of the brain, the forehead area, we have what's pink on this one and that's the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe has a lot to do with consciousness, with reasoning, with, con with conscious skeletal control, with personality, etc. etc. A lot of stuff in here. The second lobe that we're interested in is the parietal lobe. That is the purple or bluish lobe. And that one is the conscious perception of touch, pressure, temperature, vibration, and so forth. So that's one of the main functions of that lobe. When we go to the back, we have a green lobe, and that is the occipital lobe. And that is the conscious visual lobe. So we see the pictures consciously back here. The temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is sort of behind the ear, and one of the things we do have in the temporal lobe is the auditory and olfactory input. We also have some of the memory creation in the temporal lobe, as well as some of the limbic system, which is the emotional brain. Now this brain is very nice because it's colored. Most brains do not come colored, but this one did. We have this red portion. The red portion is the first gyrus in front just anterior to what's known as the central sulcus. And this is known as the precentral gyrus. The precentral gyrus is the primary motor cortex. That is where motor skeletal, conscious motor activity commands are initiated from. Then when we go behind the central sulcus, we have the purplish darker purplish stained gyrus, and that's the post-central gyrus, and that's the primary sensory um, more cortex. That is where we feel touch, where we can locate where touch is coming from, or temperature, or pressure. But what we're concerning ourselves about right now is the posterior part, the cerebellum. So let's take that out. When we look at the cerebellum, this is the way it sits in the back of the brain, right here. The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. The other thing that I notate about the cerebellum is this little wiggly stuff in the middle. And that's known as the vermis. And it literally means verm. The cerebellum regulates motor control and it's mostly subconscious, so it's unconscious. We have general body um, uh, movement coordination in the hemispheres. 
and the vermis particularly has coordination of motor control of the axial skeleton, which is the skeleton in the midline of the body. And then the last structure in here that we need to worry about for this particular review is the arbor vitae, and that's the white stuff that looks sort of like a tree, or branched with a tree, and that's the tree of life, and that's white matter in the cerebellum. So we're going to point out a few structures on this brainstem. The first structure, and this is posterior, this is anterior, first structure I want to point to is the corpora quadrigemini. They are in the back, just above the cerebellum. There's two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi. The superior colliculi have to do with visual reflexes, whereas the inferior have to do with auditory reflexes. And what that means is that the superior colliculi will, you will respond with turning your head towards where you can see something just show up in your peripheral vision, like a fly shows up and you just look at it. Or an airplane shows up in your peripheral vision that you just look at it. Hopefully it won't hit you. Inferior one is the same thing with auditory. So you start hearing something on one, on one ear, you start looking at it. That's what those mean. Then what we have here are structures known as the cerebral peduncles. And the cerebral peduncles are seen right in here, these up and down lines. We also have cerebellar peduncles, and they are going straight back between the cerebrum, or the, the, the brainstem here, and the cerebellum. So cerebral peduncles, cerebellar peduncles. When we look at the brainstem, we have a few pieces here. We have the midbrain area, the pons area, and the medulla oblongata area. Looking at these white structures here. Medulla oblongata, pons, where we could have a little bridge looking thing, and the midbrain. The medulla oblongata has a couple of structures of our interest, and they are in the front of the medulla oblongata, they're known as the pyramids. And the pyramids are motor neurons that travel down, that go to skeletal muscles. And what they do at this level of the, of the brainstem is they cross, which is known as decusation. And then on this brain we have a very nice green looking thing that looks like an olive, and it's called the olive. It's a relay station to the midbrain, it also has a few other functions to it.